Welcome back to the Man Cave Workshop and thank you so much for joining me again. Okay, we've got a valve on the bench. Now, the story behind this one is as a guy, a friend of mine called John, who's a retired TV engineer. And he's asked me to have a look at this radio. He's totally capable of doing it himself. Um, but he has arthritis in his hands, so he struggles a bit now. And the story behind the radio is that a friend of his, who sadly passed away uh, not long ago, uh, his wife has, has asked for this radio to be serviced and looked at. So, we're going to have a look at it. Now, it's a Defiant radio. I think the model's an MSH450. Um, I'll, I'll look at the back in a bit and get the model number. Um, tell you what the model number is. So, on this bench, I've got an isolation unit to the power. And I've got the lamp limiter that I made in one of the early videos after the man cave workshop destruction so we're going to plug it in see if it works and hopefully it'll work and we'll just change a few caps and all will be good and we'll tidy up the case get it on its way so let's plug the thing in so i'm plugging it into the lamp limiter here and then obviously i'm plugging the lamp limit oh I'll tell you what let's check the fuse eh Check the fuse first. Well, actually, uh, sh should we just go for it or should we check the fuse? I think we should, we should have a quick look at the fuse. As always, I'm totally unprepared. I've not even opened the toolbox. Um, hope you enjoyed the live stream at Radio Crunches and the last two videos of uh, the little short videos of what went on there. Really fun, really good to see, see Graham and uh, Maddie and Coco and of course Mrs Radio Cruncher who was a fantastic host uh, not that Graham isn't a fantastic host they very welcome had a great time there anyway moving on let's have a look what fuse we've got in this plug okay Ooh, I've not seen a plug like that before it looks like it's had um, looks like this is a fairly I don't think that's an original lead and it's got a 5 amp fuse in. Hmm, perhaps it should have a 3 amp fuse. Now, Jevy, Jevy Carson has sent me some fuses. So we'll change that after with a 3. And that reminds me on, we've got to look at that Roberts radio and put the right um, fuse in that as well. Anyway, let's plug this in. Okay, we're getting over here. And let's see what happens. So. I think this, can you see it? Let's get it in shot. I think this is the on off because it clicks. That's the, that's the tuning knob. And it's good to see that the dial string works. It feels like it's got a nice flywheel on that, a bit weighted. And this is the band selector. So it's got shortwave, I can't read these properly, medium wave and long wave. Let's let's stick it on short wave first and get some power to it. Okay, we should, if I get this in short, we should see this bulb light up and go dim. I'm not that familiar with valve radios, but I'm gonna have a go. Here we go, let's put it on. Well, I'll tell you what, let's get some power to the bench first. I've got, I've got it, I've, I'm that isolated with everything and that careful that I haven't even put the power on the bench. Now we've got power on the bench. Okay, so we're on. And the bulbs come on. And it is dimming. So that's good. Let's give it a few minutes. I think that's... Is this volume? Is this... Again, like me, totally unprepared in a way. I've not looked at a schematic. I've not done any research. But that bulb's dimmed right down now. Oh. And we... We are getting a hum. On that, I think I don't know if could, let me get you in here so you can hear the hum. Can you hear that? It's just humming. 
is humming. Uh, the dial face light has come on this side. I don't know if he's got another bulb that side. So that's short wave. Let's try medium wave. Uh, no, we're still humming. We've got the volume on full at the moment. The, 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 the bulbs dimmed down and stayed dim. Uh, let's try long wave. Let's try switch it on and off the... No, there's nothing, nothing wrong with the switch. Is it the band selector? Or is that telling us that the capacitors are just gone past their use by date by a very long time? Okay, so that's the what's the diagnosis? We've got a hum and that's about it. Now John did tell me it was working the last time it was plugged in but we don't know when that was or how it's been stored so I guess we've got to get it uh, out of its cabinet and have a look right okay let's get this thing stripped down get the chassis out see if these knobs are going to plate ball and come off nicely well that one did oh and there's a there's a foam felt behind that one Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Well, there's a different size foam felt behind that one. Let's keep these in order. Next one. Oh, that one came off easy. There's the same size as the first foam felt behind that one. Okay. Oh, that one, that one just came off. No problem. Okay, let's... Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to... Put these safely away in order and then get the back off it. We'll have a look, we'll get the sh chassis out. I imagine it's quite dirty inside. And then before we go any further, I think we do need a schematic, see what Radio Museum uh, says, if it's got any information about this radio. And then we're not so blind. Okay, okay, looking at the back, it's a model MSH450. There's a, there's a screw missing down here. And there's a screw missing there and it's got quite a modern screw in there. I'll have to have a look to see if we've got any replacements for them. I think this video will just be, can you see what I'm doing, can you? Taking these screws out. I think it will just be a dismantle, Let's see what we've got. Just briefly looking, it, it does look quite clean in there. Wow, that, that screw's rusted itself in a, a little bit let's get that out put that one side and because this isn't my radio we can't lose things oh there was there's two screws at the top as well that are missing okay let's get this one out and i had a quick look it's got uh, an inspection panel underneath at, at the bottom so Perhaps we'll have a quick look at that, but I do want to get... Let's pull you back out so you can see what's going on. Oh, yes, it's not too bad. It is a little bit, the dust mites have been in a little bit, you can see. But all the valves are there, and they are them two are Mazda valves. That one's a Mazda, so they, they look um, original. Okay, let's, let me gently... So it's, I take it this is uh, for different power sources coming in. We've got something called an LS control there. External only. Little switch there. Don't know what this is. Serial number is N2690. Uh, got some other things down there that I'm not quite sure what it is. Like I said, I'm going to look at Radio Museum and see what information I can find. Okay, let's get these... Let's get this base panel off. Oh, all the feet are there. That's a good sign. I don't know what all this is about. Did it, have these feet been added? I think they hold the chassis in, don't they? Oh, let's, let's just have a look what's inside here. That's a bit gnarled up. Let me get another screwdriver. Okay. Oh dear. This does, these do not want to come out at all. Let me get a 
a better size screwdriver than that one. We don't want to gnarl these up or anything, but they, they've been in there a very long time and they do not want to come out. They will do. Let's have a quick pause while I just undo these screws. Okay, I'm just, just about to undo the last one, so I want you to see what I see. I'm not seeing in here at all. Oh, look at all that wax fun in there. Let's have a look. So you've seen it the first time, like I am. I do think that I'm going to take it out to give it a good clean. Um, but I mean, look at that, 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 this, our main shot, this is actually, it's, it's dripping with wax. So yeah, then wax capacitors have all got to go. That might be why the radio is not working. But there's the underside. So what I'll do, I'll just, I'll just get it out of its case and we'll get the chassis on the bench and um, carry on from there. So I've just popped pops it back upright again and as you can see it does have another bulb but sadly that that one's fell down I'll have to have a look at that uh, the speaker is going to need there's the transformer down there he's going to need desoldering to get this out of its case um, and then we're going to clean it all up dial string dial string possibly original it does look like a piece of string. Okay, let's get it out of its case properly. I'm just going to get it out of its case by undoing these screws that are on the feet. You can see there. I don't know if them they must be a ridge. I think that's what holds the chass chassis in. Get this one out. I've got to take the top ones out last so um, it doesn't fall. That one's staying on. Now let's just give it a bit of support. Just we don't want it to fall, break anything. Probably good practice because. If you had one where the speaker was in front of it, or the dial face was in front of it, and the chassis fell on it. Oh, is it going? Yeah, it's moving now. You'd be in a whole world of pain. Okay, we drop that. Yeah, that's what holds the chassis in. Okay, we'll get the sh chassis out on the bench. So all them screws are undone at the bottom. Will it come out in one piece? Ah, what's holding it now is the dial pointer. You can't see that, but as I try to get it out, you can see the dial pointer up there. So we're going to have to, oh gosh, this is, this is tricky. We're going to have to pull that out without bending it too much. Pull this back. And there is a lot of dirt in there. Now, John's been in touch and he said he thought it was the, 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 the friend who passed away, he thought it was his father's radio. Can we get this? You can't see what I'm doing, can you? Th th that's holding it in now, the dial lamp. Let's get that out. And then we've just... Do these come off here? I think we'll desolder these. We'll mark them and desolder them uh, from the... I think that's the output transformer there, isn't it? We'll desolder them from there and we'll get this thing clean. Okay, the soldering iron's warmed up. Now, rather than use a sharpie and mark these wires permanently, what I'm going to do is get a little bit of it, the electrical tape, stick that on that side, and we'll stick another we'll get it off and we'll stick another piece on that side we can take them off after and then we've not we've not marked the radio then have we so let's see if these want to play ball and come off nicely we don't that one came off okay so that's the one we need to mark let's just give it a little bit more just to get the polarity right on the speakers so if my hands are in the way here right and then see so we can take that Take that uh, electrical tape off after. Let's get this side off. There we go. 
Now then, all juggling, this is, it is rather dirty. This, the chassis come out completely. Let's put that on one side. Let's, let's have a look, I mean, look at this, guys. We've got cobwebs in there. The, the, the back plate, this obviously hasn't been open for a very long time. Which is how we like them. It's never been got at or messed with up to yet. Let's move the case out of the way. Okay, and let's put this chassis. Of course, we've got all this stuff behind it that's fell over. PVA glue, that's cheap, cheap PVA glue, that's really good. Uh, some super glue and some gorilla glue and stuff behind there. Anyway, so here is the chassis. Let's have a good look around it. You can see it, it is rather dirty. Got the dial lights there. We've got this this arrangement for the the the, the dial string is uh, quite good. Of course, we'll be we'll be lubing all the pivots up and that. But the first thing we need to concentrate on is on getting this thing going. Let's tip it over. Have a look. There's all the underside. Now, if you want to comment, well, we've got cobwebs in here and stuff. If you want to comment, give me some advice. I will read through all the comments. What I'm going to do for now is I'm going to take the chassis and the case outside um, with a, a soft brush. I'm going to get rid of all the dust. I perhaps should have worn gloves, I know. Get rid of all the, the dust and then we can actually start doing a little bit of work on this radio. I mean, it is, it is pretty... Pretty dirty. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, this part one of this radio. Um, I am going to need some help, some advice off you guys if you can. Put it in the comments and I will thoroughly read them. And uh, of course I'm going to go on Radio Museum and get as much information on this set as I can. Before I do anything else, I, I don't want to jump in at the deep end. I'm going to go through it methodically and uh, See if we can get this into a nice, uh, a nice valve set again. So for now, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and all that. Thank you, guys. Catch you next time.